Hello. Hey, Steve, how you doing? Thank you very much for joining, mate. All right, Steve, you're right. Hello. Can you hear me? Good right. afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, th thanks for joining, mate. It's uh, much appreciated. I'll be taking out of your, your busy schedule, you know. Yeah, lovely, lovely to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Fantastic. Yeah, it's a pleasure. It's a nice kind of getting into kind of the, 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 the festive season, you know. I've already have, haven't watched Die Hard yet, but I've had some whiskey. The trees are up, you know. <laughs> I've watched Love Actually, which is which is the one. There you go. That'll do it. Boy, the British one, right? So yeah. There you go. Yeah. It's officially Christmas. <laughs> I love all these traditions that people have in the lead up to Christmas. Uh, but before we get into that, which we will definitely get into for sure, because I love <laughs> I love Christmas. It's my favorite favorite time of year for sure. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself uh, briefly, just to uh, let us know who you are and what you do and all that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, definitely. So my name's Steve Campbell. Um, I run a company called Sunny BI, which I do Power BI essentially mostly, but data analytics, all that kind of stuff, the fun stuff, um, consulting and training. So I do a lot in the training space as well. Yeah, nice. um, been in, in consulting for a while. So pretty much spend my time just talking about data, talking about Power BI, and fabric and all of that fun stuff. It's pretty fun, right? I mean, your, your job to talk about data and power BI is not so bad, right? Right. Yeah. Getting into a lot of the training as well, which I, I find even even more enjoyable. So yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely very happy to do do what we do. That's cool. Yeah, I actually one of my favorite parts of my job is the the, the training part. I gotta say, talking to people and like helping people. Out. Even like the ad hoc part, you know, people contact you and have a question, and you gotta help them try to solve these problems. It's good fun. It's uh, it's really yeah. nice. Very nice. Yeah, I think uh, anyone who who does this sort of work is is a problem solver at heart. So anything where we get to solve yeah. problems, I know we we always enjoy. Yeah, I guess I guess if you're not a problem solver at heart, you're gonna have a hard time in the industry, right? <laughs> True. Yeah, I would definitely definitely agree with that one. <laughs> um. Anyway, yeah. So I'm gonna do a back around the Christmas stuff because I, I interrupted our conversation completely there. Just for for I mean, of course, important to hear about you for sure. Um, but yeah, I was, this lead up to Christmas, like, so that, you know, December and this, when everything that starts is nice. I mean, for me, as soon as mince pies are in, are in the picture, then it's time to get whiskey and time to put the tree up, all that kind of stuff, you know, it's a, it's a nice, nice time go. of year. Yeah. So I've actually, I've been back in the UK since 2020, so middle of COVID, okay. but, um, I was in the States for eight years prior to that so, really that's it i didn't know that that's interesting yeah so lives over there um so so no mince pies really over there you don't you don't get that mince pies or mulled wine it's yeah, not, yeah. not a big thing over there so I definitely been mm. been filling up since i've been back so happy to to come back to those for sure I was, gonna, I was gonna say if you actually like them or not is a big question i suppose but in um I, one of my favorite things about mince pies other than the taste of course is the utter confusion on people's <laughs> face. Um, they don't exist in Germany either. Um, mulled wine does, of course. Glühwein is very, very, very big over here. But mince pie, it's the, they explain to people that some, something called a mince pie contains no meat is always a fun conversation. It's probably, I'm not sure what, what's more confusing um, to people in Germany, mince pies or cricket. Um, it's yeah. one of those two <laughs> things, you know. <laughs> yeah, mince pie is uh, definitely one of those odd ones that I don't think... British people quite realize yeah. exactly how old they are until you, you try and explain it to someone, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> my my dad always sends over like like five boxes and then I will buy some some minced meat and I make make I don't know, make my own, but I kind of cheat. Um but yeah, I, I think the, the first couple of boxes we always get through pretty quickly to be honest, because it's like that deprivation that they haven't yeah. existed since like the previous January, you know? It's like oh well, straight away. <laughs> right? Eat all that sugary goodness. Yeah. See, I'm one of these people like when people start to complain that like in October uh, or like, you know, early, early November, all the Christmas stuff starts appearing in the shops, like all the Christmas sweets and stuff and like, oh, it's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's only November or only December. I'm just kind of like, what are you complaining about? This food is really good. It tastes delicious. Just enjoy it when you can, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, we we we've not put our a tree up this year though because we I'm going back to the states actually next week. So oh wow, over there. nice. So I think that's that's when Christmas really gets real for me when I can get to see you know the tree up and and all of that. Are you going somewhere snowy? Yes, uh, just north of Chicago. So oh, okay. all right, very very snowy <laughs> um, up in Wisconsin. Yeah, so wow. going to be very very cold and very snowy and very Christmassy as yeah. as we're used to it. And enjoy it, mate. I hope it's a, a fantastic, festive, snowy period for you. I'm sure it will be. <laughs> I think it will be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, should we talk about data, power behind stuff, a little bit at least, you know? Yeah, maybe a bit. Yeah. What have you been up to recently? What cool things have you been working on? What frustrating things have you been working on? Go on. Yeah, so <laughs> it's quite an interesting time for me. So I've just launched Sunny BI in August. Mm -hmm. So prior to that, I ran data analytics team or Cognizant, mm -hmm. Microsoft Business Group in the yeah. UK. Um, so very much doing the same thing, obviously data analytics, Power yeah. BI, all of that fun stuff. Yeah. Now, however, um, <laughs> we just started Sunny BI. Uh, yeah, very, very fun. So it's a great yeah. time. Yeah. Kind of two, two aspects of it. Launched a few trainings. I'm hoping to get um, all those training courses up there, mm -hmm. doing some cool. live courses at the moment. Which is really, really fun. I've never really done any of those those okay. live ones before, but you get a lot more interaction. Mm. Um, sure. I've done in person training, of course, mm. and that kind of live, yeah. but this is a six week six week class. So that's oh, been wow. great. That's cool. Yeah. That's that's a, that's a lot. Yeah, six weeks class. Um, really, really great students as well. So wow. Uh, I think lots of people following along doing doing really well on the tasks and stuff. So yeah, nice. that's been been very very fun. I'm really interested in that because I, like I said, I really love giving power by trend, but how the longest one I've ever done has been like three days. Um, and yeah. even, I, and I, obviously, you know, when it's a sort of tool, like if you get into it, you can plenty to talk about for a long time, but mm -hmm. in the past, probably actually since 2019, 2019, the longest power BI training I've given has been three hours. And it's really, really frustrating sometimes when you want to get really into it and really, yeah. and it's just that like you just, you have to constantly remind people, I'm just showing you the bare basics of what <laughs> is possible. You got to keep digging keep learning all this type of stuff, you know? So six weeks must be really interesting. Yeah. I mean, obviously it's, it's about, about seven hours a week, I say, yeah. um, seven yeah. to eight. What I really liked about this one is I got to allow people a lot more time to go and do because obviously that's always the hardest thing I think yeah. whenever you do training because you're there company especially for companies pay for it they have two days mm. where they can let employees go mm. um you can be the best trainer in the world but you the person needs to go and practice yeah. that yeah so I think with with this longer one which I'm kind of enjoying doing you have a lot more time to let people go and start building and actually exactly deep dive into things a bit more that's cool so do you like do you like like project along the way like with data sets and you kind of build like a the entire process like from end to end is that the general concept yeah so there's four weeks where it's kind of builds on and um, with some tasks and the, mm. the first four weeks are really the training mm. and then the last two is more of this this capstone idea okay um where we go and actually build and, and look at everything we've done mm. and try and put that into action Nice, very cool. Exactly, Donald. Yo, indeed. Sorry, hello to Madison as well. I didn't see that. I apologize, Madison. Thanks very much for, for joining. Yes, well, you can say yo here as well. I think we'll, we'll, we'll be permitted on, yeah, this one, I, I... on this one occasion. We won't, we won't get sued just yet. Um, <laughs> Sunny BI, by the way, that's a great name for a company. I love that. Yeah, where, thank where you. you so, <laughs> yeah, I know. Sunny's been a. Been a a nickname of mine as well that I've had and Sunny's kind of done a, been a lot through the past. So it's, it's kind of me and, and Power BI here, really. Cool. So Sunny BI, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm curious if, if I'm allowed to delve into where that nickname came from. I'm not sure if it gets too personal. Um, you can ref <laughs> refuse to answer if you want me, you know? No, it's just just been around for a while, to be honest. Uh, uh, been there, so yeah. Just, just me, and I thought, you know, yeah, better than Steve Bi. So I think that one had a bit more of a, <laughs> a bit more of a ring to it, right? I get it. Yeah, one of the things I was originally going to call um, myself my online existence was going to be like I think um, Berry Bi, 
because people, strange number of emails that would get mixed up and people would respond and call me Fen Berry instead of Ben Ferry, <laughs> which I will never understand how that mistake gets made, but it happened quite often. So the Berry BI thing, but um, there's a guy who's who's been on, um, I forget people's names when I talk immediately. Um, he, he, his uh, website is Berry, he is Berry BI. And I was like, okay, fair enough. So then that, 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 that's gone. <laughs> um that's the challenging thing to come up with like a a name sometimes but the fact that you just kind of had one handed to you is this thing that yeah you it's quite nice yeah yeah no definitely yeah. it's it's there you could you could try fen bi maybe not quite quite the ring to it fen oh, that, this looks like fenby you know it sounds like some kind of like <laughs> toy from the 90s yeah. furbies and fenbies i'm not sure we'll see yeah me i think at this, at this point i'm pretty much stuck with power bi guy yeah, for a while at least anyway until i can nice. be bothered to change it I, I think you've you've cornered Power BI guy there. I'll, I'll keep that one. It's it's great. There's a there's a couple of us on YouTube though. I'll tell you that there's um, there's, a, there's a Power BI guy. There's the Power BI guy. It's it's uh it's not the the great original idea that I thought it was when I when I came up with it like in 2007. <laughs> you know whatever it was. Yeah, just... um, my my problem is I I I can't bring myself to care about stuff like SEO and uh, all that kind of. Stuff. It's something that you have to care about, I guess, in a certain way. But I'm like, no, it's just whatever. Yeah, I think yeah. just just keep talking, keep doing interesting content and that kind of stuff. Stay scared. Yeah, the Power BI community. I mean, I think everyone everyone knows how awesome and how lucky mm -hmm. we are with such a such a great community. So I think when you just yeah. have interesting things, people people listen and turn up. So. And just just make sure you hashtag Microsoft Fabric as well now as well, just to kind of be inclusive for, for the for the whole thing. Um, yeah. It's, my wife actually came and asked me the other day because she was she she does work with with, with um, Power BI um, pretty often, um, and she was asking me I forget what she was asking me about but she was getting confused as to did she need to use Fabric or something because obviously the the the, the answers the community page has changed to like Fabric rather than Power yeah. BI. And she was like, what, what do I need to do with Fabric? I was like, don't worry, just for now, just forget about Fabric. Just keep doing what you're doing. You're all right. I, know. I I like and I get the push from Microsoft and I see obviously why they're they're rebranding everything as fabric as you know it is fabric now. I mean I've I, I did data lakes before, right? Mm. So I, I do do data projects. So I've always been doing doing data lakes and I, I love the the fabric tool. I think especially when it's there and when mm. we're kind of a bit more into GA. Um it's it's gonna be awesome. I'm really yeah. looking forward to it. No. That said, I think I don't think every Power BI developer goes in now and needs to start learning Python. To be honest, yeah, yeah. There was one new tool in Fabric, which is Data Activator. Everything else has has been in Synapse for a while. Mm. Um, mm. All right, they they change how things work, and obviously it's all under the same umbrella. Mm. Power BI is still Power BI, and I think you can still be a Power BI person if you want, and and just focus on that. Without having to go down the yeah. whole fabric route, I think it's um, directly. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And directly, that's a good point. Um, I think that the only thing that's overly negative from my side, and not really negative, just I guess frustrating sometimes. It's kind of like when it, when you come to this list of things that you want to learn or things that are relevant to your job, fabric just kind of like opened this door to like other stuff that's kind of seeping through. It's like, oh man, I'm already full. Um, so it's just, um, you know, uh, having new possibilities of stuff that you can do is always really cool. But when you already feel this pressure to learn, it's like, it, it just becomes more, you know? Yeah. And I think that that's, that's my point, right? I mean, there's always been data science. Yeah. There's always been data engineers. This fabric didn't make that new. All it's done <laughs> is now we've said, Hey, look, this is in the same UI mm -hmm. essentially. Yeah. Um, doesn't mean everyone has to go around and start thinking I need to be a data engineer and a data scientist and now a BI developer. Yeah. There's there's worth in being a generalist at some points, but again, there's there's a lot more worth if you're already specializing in it. Mm. You don't need to go and think, oh, I need to spread myself too thin. But a generalist is a really good um thing that you bring up because a generalist a generalist from power bi i can kind of see that but if you include generalists from power BI and all of fabric that's a lot of stuff to be a generalist exactly. on that's you can't be a generalist on that this is too much um i'm going to quickly go back to donald's um point here because 
at the top of the name fabric is so mad. I think I figured data fabric was copyright or something. I I got to I know it's not massively important, but I don't really get the name to be honest. Fabric, it, I, it's not the sort of thing that, I mean, actually, maybe I'll go back to something stupid that I don't care, usually care about, but like SEO, you're like searching for the name. It's, it, it just doesn't really kind of fit. I didn't understand why they went with that name. Fabric doesn't really, what does it yeah, mean? Yeah. And I think there's data fabric and that kind of stuff mm. already out there. It's, it's interesting. I know. I, I think there's um, definitely marketing teams in Microsoft to do this and I know there's there's some tools out. I can't remember what it was. I remember they they released one and it was already a copyrighted name oh, okay. um, or something else. I think it was one of the Dynamics things that they did once. So definitely um, always interesting how, who knows how they come up. And... I can just imagine like Microsoft just like walking through anything, just kicking down doors with a team, massive team of lawyers and be like, no, it's <laughs> our copyright now. You know what I mean? Um, I was thinking something like Weave would have made like because it's fabricy when it brings stuff together i don't know i don't know what i'm talking about but it's just something that came to my head um and i like to focus on the unimportant points like the name of the product right because at the end of the day <laughs> well i always think of of um now what are we going to call it you know if there's i thought you're going to get a load of these puns about fabric right i'm a i'm a data sewer or something all of this <laughs> kind of stuff coming out you know these roles the, the the one that I see most around was people started to refer themselves as a fabricator, like oh, uh, a fabricator. Yes, that's it's just like, yeah, it's like don't call yourself a fabricator. It's just, <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't sound great. I mean, obviously, fabrication <laughs> itself doesn't sound like a good thing. When you work with data and you call yourself someone who fabricates, it's never the the, the best thing. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna pretty bring up Kurt's uh, point here. Yeah, don't think anyone has to upscale the fabric. You just need to know what's around and invest it exactly. So basically knowing that it exists so if a use case comes along you know that it's there to be used and once you once you have a use case you can kind of get down into it i think i'm kind of paraphrasing Kurt's point there so if i was paraphrasing incorrectly feel free to jump on me and say how dare you twist my words like that but um <laughs> yeah. yeah that's a uh, no, he fantastic point um completely agree with, with kurt that i mean mm. to the point yeah you should i always think if you're working in a space you should know when to recommend if, if there's a better way of doing things mm. or what other options are. Mm. Doesn't mean you necessarily have to go and, and be able to code, you know, everything in the back end as well. Yeah, yeah. Like, I know yeah. the solution and I know exactly you have to do this, this exact precise thing. And because I've stored the entire documentation in my head, um, which I'm sure some people are lucky enough to be able to do so, but certainly not me. Really? I still copy and paste most of my docs. Um, but yeah. Actually, you know, I, I, I switched on. Do you know the the new DAX editor view, whatever it's called in Power BI? Is it, is the, it called the, the DAX? DAX window? Yeah, query yeah. one. Have you used that much? Have you been checking that out a little bit? Not to that. I haven't really been using it. Um, I, uh, it's actually pretty cool. I think. Um, yeah, it, it's <laughs> it's very cool. I think when you're doing hardcore DAX, it's probably. Mm. I don't imagine eighty-five percent of people will really actually need it, but mm. if you are doing some taxi, it's it's a little better than I thought it was when I first saw it. To be honest, the thing that I've found, um, I'm not sure this is a great example, but certainly a helpful to kind of maybe learn the basics as well. Is that you know if you like do that thing where you you don't write the measure, you drag in the field, and then you you run it, and then it creates the measure for you. You know, on the um, oh, I was going to yeah, you, you implicit can put, use implicit measure, obviously, which you shouldn't do, but you can use implicit measure and then you re use the performance analyzer. Yeah. Okay. So previously, I would just have a quick copy of that and then put it in some kind of file. But now I like the fact that you can look at that and then you can run it from the DAX editor. That's quite cool. So it's like put it, like show in mm. DAX editor view or something, and then you can show there what's done. It's quite nice. I mean, obviously, not just with implicit measures, you can do it with DAX measures as well. Um, but my example was going to be if you're quite new and you want to kind of steal a little bit of code, you can do it that way. And like it's um, probably I kind of like showing you how to write the code yourself, if that makes sense. I noticed that today. I was like, oh, that, could be, that could be helpful sometimes. I'm not sure. Yeah. I always think it's DAX is one of those ones where it's, it's a functional language, right? And I write a DAX measure and I get a result. Hmm. It's very difficult. I think that's what makes DAX confusing. Hmm. Um, it's very difficult to know what's happening underneath mm. that. Mm. 
and um, thinking like Dax is is quite a hard thing because mm. it's a bit different <laughs> to a lot of mm. logical ways that you know humans kind of think. I think in 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 a lot of how Dax works. Mm. Um, not saying it's, it's badly written language; it's just yeah. the nature of it. I think and. Yeah. Yeah, so understanding a bit of what goes under the covers and and just the basic theory of it mm. um, really really helps. And I think these tools kind of help you see almost bits. Mm. You know, you can break your your query down a bit. Yeah, for sure. Um, just bringing this up because any power query love will always get um, a bit of attention from me. Yeah, I I love writing. Um, um, to be honest, because I just find it it's functional. Yeah, for sure. I just it's just something one of those things that some some things kind of fit well to your brain m does for me i'm not saying i'm great at it but but it works um back to dax though one of the one of my least favorite i think the word trope is i'm not sure i'm using it correctly because i haven't used the word in such a long time one of my f- least favorite power bi tropes now uh, maybe i'll choose a different word um the things that people say quite often is that trope? I need a guy. um is that dax is hard people say like you know the things that people go on yeah, dax is hard i really hate that not, not that i'm saying it's completely incorrect but i think it's said so often that it creates such a barrier to entry to people and they get scared of dax immediately like if you want to learn power bi you're gonna and you're kind of doing it on your own um at some point you're gonna of course pretty quickly you're gonna come across dax and if you have see like so many hundreds of articles or so many hundred people saying our oh, dax is hard you're immediately gonna get your back up and i don't think that's a good message to promote because i think Actually, I might have said this before at some point. I'm repeating myself probably. Like 95% of the DAX that people ever have to write is actually not that hard at all, you know? Yeah, Um, Yeah, 100% agree with you on that one. Um, And if if anyone follows me on LinkedIn, I pretty much post (laughs) all the time, right? Don't you don't necessarily need that hard DAX. Hmm. Um, there's a few things, learn the basics theories and then SQL hmm. BI will, will tell you what those are. Hmm. Um, the context really, once, once you get your head a bit around that hmm. and just data model. Well, I think that's the issue, that old one, right? Hmm. A lot of people, I have a saying, I always say, don't try and DAX your way out of bad data model, hmm. right? Uh, data model well and write simple DAX. And hmm. if you focus on, on that side of things, I think, you don't necessarily need DAX, difficult DAX, m- mm. much. Um, if you can write difficult DAX, that's awesome because you yeah. can do some amazing stuff in DAX. And I think sure. that's why people say it's hard because it it can be complex. You can yeah. do some mind blowing stuff. But yeah. You don't need to most of the time. The only the only thing that you said that I disagree with, and it's oh my, so I get a controversial now, is that <laughs> if if I have someone who is learning Power BI. Of all the websites, of all the fantastic learning resources that I don't send them to, if someone's learning, getting from the start, is SQL BI. Their content is amazing. I love it. It's fantastic. But I don't think a beginner will learn DAX from them particularly easily because That's, they yeah. start at quite a, say, medium level at least. You know? I think you have to meet, sometimes read a blog before you can understand SQL BI. That's a, that's a fair point. Um, I also, I did take SQL BI's DAX course mm. in person um, mm. when I was first learning uh, DAX, kind of when Power BI essentially came out. Mm. Um, and I was newer then, and I think <laughs> uh, mm. a bit of it went over my head. Yeah, so I will say, yeah, yeah they're definitely, um, which is good. I mean, they have their area, obviously, they're, they're fantastic at what they're doing. It's amazing yeah, what they do. As, so... Just before, in case there's any doubt of what I'm saying here, it's amazing what they do. But yeah. I think from a newcomer level, it might be like a hard starting point. To be like unleashed SQL BI upon them. <laughs> I yeah, and no, I I would I would agree with you there. They're gonna they're gonna blacklist me now. I'm gonna I'm gonna get some, <laughs> I'm gonna get some DMs if someone but shows on this. <laughs> if you want to learn it really well, then that's when you go to to SQL BI once you. Yeah. Yeah, that's with a lot of stuff, right? If, if you want to have a deep understanding, it's probably better to go and and just do some of the yeah. the free stuff and and beginner stuff and just play around. I think the, the stuff. In. Sorry, man, interrupt you. I apologize. Um, but yes, you're right. Uh, the the um the probably the stuff that I learned most of the interesting DAX from was probably um Formu uh, Gilbert. Mm. Uh, his I love Formu. It's great the way he like because it's like so, like the classic example is um, dynamic top end. 
when I think of mm. dynamic top end, I just think of Formula because that the, the way he explains and goes through and, and provided provides examples, like it's like in my head, like forever, basically. So it's like all learning all the sum X um, and whatnot. Gilbert Formu, there you go. Great name for a website as well, though. So yeah, also I haven't actually seen his deck, so definitely definitely be one I'll check out. Check out, man, for sure. Um, do you have any uh, events or anything planned? Are you going to attending anything? Any um, speaking events or anything like that? Or visiting um, any I conferences? Think, I think you're my my last of the year. I've just I've just done a run of user groups. Um, okay. Yeah, done a lot of done a few actually of of different topics. I've done yeah, cool. some of just general visualization. Nice. Um, but I, I talk a lot now more on kind of governance and strategy and stuff. And that's, that's cool. I like that. I like a lot that. of what um, what, I, what Sunny BI does essentially um, mm. helping deploy Power BI. So I'm right now who, who's in the early stages rolling it out. So mm. really, really interesting stuff. Um, been outside, but things like designing races and, and process maps, right? Nothing to do with actually Power BI. But, yeah. you know, if, if you want to, layout power bi you want certification you know what processes do you go through and then how would you do that and kind of all that kind of stuff so very um very different so i'm actually you know half of it's just producing documentations and stuff like that but, but it can be very very rewarding for documentation i really i think a lot of what i've been doing the past few few months is docs and um it can be very enjoyable I don't, don't wanna, am i wrong i think so sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, it, it helps as well get a get a lot of use out of your Power BI and people using things like Power BI correctly. Yeah, um, helps you as a even as a developer, right? Because if people can't can't use Power BI, don't understand mm. exactly where to go, don't trust the data. Um, yeah. It doesn't matter how how good your reports are. Obviously, it's <laughs> you're not going to get far. So yeah, that's true. Really, really enjoyable, and I, I love this kind of stuff. And even on the governance GDPR stuff is, is kind of <laughs> I enjoy <laughs> I enjoy that kind of stuff. So probably not too many in that camp. But yeah, no, I think actually, I mean, I think one of the, in regards to um, setting up documentation and stuff, one of the things that can make it really enjoyable is if you see a number of people not following like normal like like standard best practices and kind of a, a lack of awareness if you see that quite often it makes the docs like kind of a bit more enjoyable to do because you can people are, are going to look at them they're going to benefit from this kind of going to raise this general uh level and stuff um that yeah, kurt's just coming in there he's enjoying <laughs> <laughs> maybe not enjoying it is uh but enjoying you know setting up the the processes are, around that and and I think that's that's what it is, right? So a lot of this is allowing people to use data mm. in a safeguarded way. Mm. So helping set um, stuff up so that people can't accidentally, you know, expose PII or, or download data they're not meant to. That kind of stuff, having those those processes, those checks, those in place, um, mm. that's what I think really gets gets a lot of people into Power BI. I think it's a bit of a, a journey because a lot of you, you, you know, you always have the how do I export this to Excel hmm. and all of this kind of hmm. lovely thing. I think a lot of times people try to try and skip um, a lot of steps on this hmm. one. So it's kind of there's a there's a step between on, on people just need to be able to access data. Maybe maybe you should still let people use it in Excel, but instead of exporting the hmm. numbers in Excel and they're calculating the metrics. Connect their Excel to the um, to the data model. Let them do whatever they yeah. want in Excel. But here's here's your data. You're using the correct data. You're secured. Completely. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Um, I I stopped getting so frustrated about the connect to Excel, or, um, the export to Excel question when I think it was a, maybe a year, a couple of years ago. Now they released this you kind know, of connect directly to the data set yeah. using yeah. Excel. I actually love that feature. It's brilliant. Every everyone wins. Best of both worlds, you know. One of my favorite is the new online paginated report. Yes, that is That's very nice. True. Right. I mean, if you people, because there's 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 two types of of reports generally. I think you have this analytical reports, which is why you get a Power BI. Like, I'm looking for my trends. But sometimes people need transactional, this row level data. Hmm. 
I'm doing work. Um, I, I do need this row. Hmm. At the end of the day, people care about getting their job done, really. And that's all they're doing. If they wanted to export to Excel, it's because they believe that that's going to get them the answer they're looking for quicker. So yeah. I think it's all about how do we get them that answer quicker? Hmm. Not, you're not going to give an answer to everyone with a single or even a few reports. So hmm. I think having this this multi approach of allowing people get data, hmm. allowing people to go to reports in a secured way is kind of the one where we all win, I think. And I also think that the, the access access and data in that way, and also the connecting to data sets in Excel, this, if it's done correctly, it can also increase trust in Power BI. Because this is one of the things that you encounter quite often. People exactly. don't trust your data. People don't, don't trust your report. And when things are new, when they're not, not used to it, I can, it's very understandable. It's just human nature. So if they want to dig into that data and do their own calculations and then question the numbers, as long as we can have a normal conversation and you can explain back to them what's going on, people start to understand and then trust the reports that you build for them. So I think it's part of that process. And yes, it can be frustrating. I totally get it. But once you accept that it's just going to happen and you engage in conversation with the stakeholders, I think it's very helpful. Yeah. And some of the things I've seen people most amazed by, right, mind blowing for them is building a semantic model. Hey, I can just put this into a table of, of these fields with these numbers, right? It's instant, it's up to date. And I've, you know, mm. I've got my disparate sources. I've, I've got like 12 different databases here. Yeah. Now it's in one place. That is huge. And just having that data to people is amazing. So once you kind of, it's that step, I think, once you get people mm. more used to you saying, as you say, those reports are great, but they're mm. not, you know, different reports for different people. Mm. Um, yeah. So having then, then you get more and more reports out and people, as you say, get used to them. Yeah. This is also a great point from Madison, by the way, providing government data sets can also then lead to requirements for that analytical product. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, really, really great point. And when you have good data and, and places, even just thinking of a semantic model layer, mm -hmm. um, that will open up all these requirements come in and people won't know what to ask because they've never had this sort of rich level of data. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Something I did really like actually is this rename of data sets to semantic models. And I okay. think that, yeah. okay. that point, <laughs> we'll, we'll dive into that one. Yeah. As as we're, you know, talking about names here today. Yeah. <laughs> I I like it. The only thing that's con um is frustrating for me is the fact that just changing my terminology when I have conversations. Because it, if I say data set, it can, can confuse someone. So I've got to say, I mean semantic model, sorry, you know. That's it. <laughs> it's it's always confusing to change. No one likes it hmm. to change. Hmm. Um maybe what a uh Another statement would be, I didn't like the word data sets hmm. because I don't think that was true to what they were. Um, this, I, I always say, right, you always have two elements mm -hmm. of, let's say, an import model. You always have the metadata, which is what we open in Tableau Editor. It's, it's mm -hmm. the model of BIM, right? The, the measures, the logic, and then the data itself. Mm -hmm. right? So these are two elements. To me, a data set talks about the actual data itself that you've imported. Mm -hmm. And you actually have no control over that, that side of stuff. It's just copied, right, and put in a Power BI service. You, you actually look at this metadata, and it's really this metadata which is the value mm. of your DAX measures, your relationships, the security roles, all of this kind of stuff mm. around it. And to me, trying to explain that to someone and say a data set you, it doesn't really capture i think all yeah. of that stuff around it to yeah. me and and especially if someone's not used to it and semantic is a well-known in in data language layer right yeah. so it, yeah. it makes a lot of sense i think me. i yeah i mean I, again completely with it the I, I guess for some people like semantic it's maybe have to google what that is because it depends on who you're talking to um but I, at the end of the day i think it for for those who get into that area they like it because it makes more sense for those who don't it doesn't matter because it's not going to be part of their world right yeah and obviously with all the fabric i think is why they did it because now you're going to have 
lots of other data assets in there so it would get confusing yeah but yeah any, anything with modeling i see some comments you know model something like that <laughs> um yeah that's that's that would be good as well right model something like that but really demonstrate that we're not just talking about the data yeah that's fair uh, i'm going to go back to this comment from from donald before um because it reminded me of something i had a conversation conversation this week um again um my wife because she was needed to create a um a paginated report and i said just create the paginated report online because it's much nicer it's much easier to do it there and then it was probably the next day i walked into her office because we both work from home and i saw she's using the, the power bi report builder the, you know and i was like what are you doing why are you using that i said it's horrible it's a horrible thing to work with she was like you know what I actually prefer to than, than Power BI Desktop. It just makes more sense to me. I really like it. And I was like, "What? What does she come from? A SQL background? She, none whatsoever. <laughs> completely not at all. She's like the this the Power BI data then type side is the newest thing to her. She's she's been more <laughs> on the on the business side. So to hear that, I was. I mean, she is a trained she is a trained accountant. Maybe there's something to do with that. I'm not entirely sure. But my God. I've never heard that acronym before in my life. I, I've never heard anyone say they enjoy Report Builder more than Desktop, Not at all. especially. Not at all. Uh, it's it's strange how those things just click for certain people. Um, yeah. Oh, goddamn. But she's she's been watching lots of um, videos by um, um, Laura GB and mm. um, and also um, Grace Gold PI. Because that that, that that paginated report works. So there you go. Excel, <laughs> exactly. Excel users love that table. It's very true. That's where it comes from. Basically, one big table of data. Oh my God. As I yeah. say, always always a place though for for paginated reports. I think um, very underlooked, um, and I, I really like this this new paginated online. Um, mm -hmm. Gonna gonna be great. I mean, you'll need mm -hmm. that. You want that functionality. What a secured and, and well governed data set. Yes, or, of course. Sorry, semantic model. Now I've just, yeah. <laughs> we just talked about it. <laughs> See, that's the problem. <laughs> uh, one of the things I actually really want to do next year is there is this really awesome course on governance. I think it's by Melissa Coates, but I think it was taken over by um, Mike yes. Carlo. It is. It's meant to be amazing. I really want to do that next year um, because I've taken it. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, and it's actually on the, the training.tips, which is where I have my, my Power BI Masterclass. Um, and I see, yeah, obviously, Melissa had a lot of the, the thing. And I see Kurt, Kurt on it, who's kind of taken over a lot of the, um, the, the online site as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely fantastic content. Um, mm -hmm. I learned a lot from it. Um, I would really recommend that. Cool. That can be anything, one of my... anything you see by Melissa or, or Kurt or Matthew Roche and on any of that, um, definitely, definitely take them. The, the, that that the triangle of truth between those three. Right? <laughs> exactly. Really, I, I just I know I find that that stuff really interesting. Um, yeah. So yeah, it helps helps you even as a developer. I think it helps you understand the questions to ask the people mm. um, because there's a lot of as you say. You can have the best rapport, but if you don't have this around the trustworthiness of of data, mm. um, all of this, right? People aren't going to look at your report, yeah. so it, it helps you out. I um, mean, it, it makes this kind of more used. Absolutely. Just throwing some kind words from Kurt there. Melissa is a true inspiration, and I'm so proud to have worked with her. I wish I could have worked with her longer. Very nice. Very nice. It's nice to yeah. have that. I've, I, I don't know her that well. I've seen her work. I've chatted to her. She's, of course, a very nice person. But it's to get feedback like that from someone that's worked with high praise indeed from Kurt. Yeah, she's she's fantastic and, and lovely and taking, taking a well yeah. deserved retirement and going off nice warm weather. So I think right, uh, she's yeah. going to Portugal or something, right? Yeah, they say. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, enjoy, enjoy the retirement in the, in, in the warmth, get a bit of relaxation and whatnot. Very cool. My my plans for retirement uh, involve a Scottish island, um, <laughs> something like that. You know, bit of a bit of a uh, bit of Shetland or something. Well, my well, my will never have it, but it's still it's still there. One of my one of my ambitions. <laughs> yeah, I've always me and my wife um, we've always said we we want to go back down to Australia because that's where we met. Oh, really? That's interesting. Right. That's nice. Where about you, Dimitri? Yeah, and uh, Melbourne. So we're both that's over cool. there. She's American though, so we went back to the States. Wow. Um, almost almost a decade in the States and we're back here. So 
so so what's a nice drink. So you move you move back to the UK is has been is relatively recent. I can't remember. Yeah, uh, about three years ago now. That's cool. So you, did you did you spend any time? I'm just getting really personal questions now. Basically, um, <laughs> did you spend a lot of time together in, in in Australia, or did you just kind of meet there and then move to the US? Or? Pretty much, yeah, we're there a few months. Um, cool. Moved over, kind of came here for a bit. Mm. Uh, it was easier to go there at the time, so sure. yeah. went over there. Uh, yeah, it was, it was good. That's cool. That's cool. I like that. interesting. So I was in Wisconsin, which is north of Chicago. Mm. So mm. Right now, it's going to be, as I say, six feet of snow, probably gets down to minus 20 in Celsius Crazy. at times. And then, but That's then the cool. summers are, you know, in the 30s and Celsius in, in the 80s, 90s and Fahrenheit, um, every day, sunny, beautiful. Yeah. So complete, very, very interesting. Never experienced mm -hmm. that kind of weather. But I'm. Um, of all of that, I'm more impressed that you've you you can just so easily rattle off the the, the Celsius and Fahrenheit because I have no <laughs> idea about. I mean, I grew up in the UK, I guess I guess with Celsius, but you know both. That's an impressive skill set to have, mate. <laughs> it's it's one of those things you can't really convert in your head because it's not a very easy calculation to do. So you just kind of have to learn both. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'll say you try and use Celsius in in the states, and no one will know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's funny. My one of the weird. Um, you know how like your parents always have these like weird skills and things they can do um my dad was spent pretty much his entire life as like a, like an auditor so like counting mm. stuff and with numbers and all that kind of um, whatnot um he has the the, the conversion calculations calculations for so much in his head and i'm like <laughs> how did you ever need this need to have that if i mention celsius and fahrenheit you're like this is that so yeah times that and then it'll be about that and i'm standing there like checking it on, like, on a website like <laughs> like the old yeah, millennium that i am it's yeah especially with the with the us and the uk or, or most of europe it's mm. uh everything's everything's different always going to the gym was the hard one because i would you know go and try and pick a weight and realize it's <laughs> it's four times as heavy as i thought it was and just drop it on the floor <laughs> and it's stupid so, so. you learn oh, pretty quick through that though i'll say that's pretty class i love it I, I didn't meet my wife in Melbourne, but we um we went we spent some time. I I met my wife about a week, two weeks before I was due to go to Australia for like um, one year. Um, we we got talk. We knew each other. We started talking on Facebook, and then um I did a stupid thing whereby I was meant to fly to Australia, um but I accidentally threw my passport out. So I had to, yeah I was so I was living in Berlin and I was basically separating everything that I owned into two piles keep or throw away and i accidentally threw my um oh see you later donald thank you for joining i so, accidentally accidentally uh, threw my passport into the throwaway pile so i had to get an emergency passport to get back to the uk and then all this stuff um and then i had to delay my flight by two weeks so mm -hmm. i get my passport back and in this time this is when me and now obviously not then wife but wife now we started talking and anyway Long story short, when I was in Australia, she, she joined me there for like a few weeks and we had like a great like holiday along the coast. We hired like an old mm -hmm. camper van and did that. And oh, yeah. Lovely. One, of the, one of the highlights of that for me was we were in Sydney, but we only stayed like I think one or two nights. It was just too hot. We were dying. And um, we wanted to go to a campsite called the Grand Pines. And um, I was driving. My wife had the, had the map. And I said, we didn't, I didn't know exactly where it was. So we pulled over and my wife was going to ask if she, this person could give us directions. And back then her English was okay, but not great. And mm -hmm. it was one of these moments where I kind of saw it coming and I couldn't stop it from happening. I pulled over the car and my wife ran us down the window and she, she wanted to say direction to the Grand Pines. And she was like, can you give us direction to the Grand Penis? <laughs> And I obviously immediately burst out laughing. And the the person she asked the question to just answer came so quickly was like, I have no idea, but if you find it, please let me know. <laughs> good. Very good. Yeah. Good time. Great. Yeah. Anyway, that's a random story about Australia from my side. That's... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's lovely. Lots of uh, Power BI down there as well. Um, it's a great community. Power BI community in, in Australia and, and New Zealand. Yeah, you should get yourself to a, a conference down there. That'd be nice. 
Yeah, it's definitely definitely in the books. It's not not quite as easy as on the European runs. You can just pop over, right? L- a little yeah. more planning, but definitely yeah. want to. It'd be nice to n- nice to meet a lot of those those people. Um, sure. so I think in Europe we're quite lucky, um, and even to the states, a lot of oh, people come over to Europe. Um, mm. yeah. We get to go to some really great conferences. Um, mm. I was just in in Denmark. <laughs> we'll probably our next step as well. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, so those those type of ones you get to see a lot of people, but yeah, it's a little sure. further with with the Aussies and, and the Kiwis yeah. down there. So I would, I would love to do something with um, Daniel Marsh Patrick, something Denard related, um, bit of a mm. bit of a hike. Maybe we'd meet somewhere in the middle. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> yeah, that would be quite cool. Asia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Then, there you be go. Quite, be quite nice. Just both make half yeah. a trip, and then we're, we're sorted. Um, yeah, it'd be cool. No, I'm not before. I mean, there's some cool. Uh, did did we meet briefly at uh, Next Step in twenty? Not this year, but last year. 20, yeah, I think we did, right? Yeah, yeah, we yeah, definitely yeah. did. We we, we had the Next we, Step. We had, we had we had like a, a brief chat. Uh, um, Lego Land, that one. Right, that right. yeah, was awesome. Loved yeah, it. Nice. yeah, great fun. Good. Gonna hold a conference. Yeah, Lego Land. So yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I'm um, I saw that that um, the guy in Cuba going to Oslo for Fabric February. So that should be cool because mm. that's what I'm definitely oh, nice. going to. Um, so yeah, kind of have a bit of a vacation in the snow. You get you get your vacation in the snow. I get my vacation in the snow. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. I said I, I told my wife that I'm going to try and stay a bit longer because she's not a fan of the cold weather at all. And mm. um, it's Oslo in February, so I'm get a chance to go and play in some snow, see some northern lights. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah. Yeah, I think um, as Chris says, I think it's in Legoland again this year. I think they change every year. They swap between mm-hmm. Billund and um, in Copenhagen, I believe. Yeah, I mean those guys are, are great. Um, I love their their conferences. Always, always try. I'm gonna try and make it to the cruise this year. That one's a bit yeah, cool. bit more. Uh, that one's a uh, look sounded excellent. I was speaking to people who went, so I think anything by. We're using as gear and the guys uh definitely one to to keep a look out for yeah sure that's true actually i would love to go to i'm just i guess i've mentioned before i'm just scared that i'll just get just travel sick the entire see sick the entire <laughs> time and just make an absolute fool of myself so i think it's it's one for my side to skip unfortunately but it would be cool yeah it's a very interesting idea and is it's they do some good ones for some of those more advanced topics um mm. you know yeah. the, i think they're all three hour sessions mm. so Wow, yeah, it's really, really interesting, I think, to to get to those because you can get a lot mm-hmm. deeper than you would with with anything else. And I've got um, in, I think, the second Thursday of January, the guy who organizes, you know, the um, the date of his conference in Faro. He is. Yes, I saw that one. Be, yeah, that's going to be very cool. Yeah. And I'm yeah, hoping that's... as well. So, yeah. Yeah, it should be nice just to get out, be able to get in more northerly, windy places. That suit my suit my personality, my and my skin type. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of uh, a good way to plan little trips, right? These these conferences, like it when they have them in, in nice places, because you can kind of go. You feel good because you're you're learning and you're going to meet people. But it's it's mm. equally just to go and have a nice go visit somewhere. Yeah, yeah, you probably wouldn't otherwise. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask a question that I think I haven't asked for a while actually maybe not intentionally anyway um Jeff we always used to come to the chat and ask pe- for people what the 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 least favorite or the one thing if they could have in Power BI that doesn't exist what would you like to have it in there so I'm just going to just throw that question upon you now if there's one thing that you could change or add or uh, improve or like what would it be what would you pre- oh pre- that's a be? that's a tough one yeah that's what be... bring it upon you yeah, Power BI globally or, or desktop? It could be whatever you want, mate. Globally. <laughs> there you go. Throughout the product, but not fabric, but just Power BI. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that is... Uh... I, I like definitely... <laughs> See, I'm going to say more stuff around some of the the monitoring and more okay. kind of granular yeah. controls around that stuff. Um a lot of what we're setting up now kind of relies on, you know, the delivery scopes as, as set out by, by Melissa and Kurt kind of does that. Mm-hmm. I think it'll be nicer controls around that, kind of how, how you share. You can do a bit. Um, we definitely have a lot of, of, you know, rules around certification. It's more of that integration, like maybe, you know, 
I could certify something, then I'm allowed to share it. Um, mm. Mm. Yeah. Some of the things they're adding, you know, like links out to everyone by default. And then I know you can kind of change that. But yeah. that, that kind of more granular control, I'd say, over a lot of that stuff, which I think they're investing in, but you don't always get as, as much as quick yeah. turnaround. Yeah, nice one. I can I can live with that answer. I like it. Makes sense. I think for me, it would probably because I, I think how often do I answer that question myself? Very rarely. Probably something metrics related, just to mm. massively significantly improve metrics and access to metrics, and just without using APIs, without using PowerShell, just get metrics that work nicely, that have more history, and that cover any number of workspaces that you want, all that kind of stuff for me, that would be. Yeah, I've never used the metrics that heavily, to be honest. Yeah. Um, they do look like they have a lot of potential, but I, yeah. I, yeah, I can see probably where you're coming from, where they'll get there, I'm sure. But yeah, well, we'll see. Nice um, to... But th this this new version, this whatever it is, it's been in preview for so long now, um, and it hasn't really changed much at all. And um, yeah, well, it'll, it'll probably will. Actually, Another my another answer would be not to add something would be to remove something and it'd probably just be because for me dashboards like like Power BI dashboards for me they need so much time and investment to make them even close to, to good for me I'll just get rid of them I'll just scrap dashboards completely which would probably upset some people because I'm sure some people do use them I'll be like just get rid of it I think I think they're they're going with let's just stop talking and pretend <laughs> it exists, right? I think that's the the strategy which which I can get on board with. Um, yeah. I see training programs now, and and sometimes people say, "Oh, you know, can you help me do some training? This is kind of what I want." And it's always dashboards because they've copied off somewhere else. I'm just like, hmm. we we'll just erase this line. I'm not going to tell you about <laughs> dashboards. <laughs> I don't think anyone's used one in the last few years. Um, I think a concept, but I just I feel, yeah. yeah, maybe it didn't. Not quite as in theory, they sound like they would be very useful, but mm -hmm. in practical, I've 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 personally not used them at all, or really seen them being used that much. I really can't remember the last time I created one. I, I have for sure at some point, but like years ago, I remember Bernard mentioned at some point that he still he still used them for one or two things. Um, but I think if you if you just take a step back from how they are now, how they look now and the functionality. And then if you look at everything that's been improved over the last number of years and it has been built that didn't exist, I guess Fabric itself could be a perfect example of that. And then Fabric, oh, sorry, Quatch, and then um, dashboards. I was mm. kind of sitting in the background like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think <laughs> with, with apps now as well, I mean, apps kind of yeah. more or less replicate a lot of, I mean, oh, different, right? Because you're not looking in a metric and clicking in a metric. But mm -hmm. I guess that's, yeah, as I say, it does sound like this is great, right? Oh, I can see all my, let's say I have a list of KPIs. You can see the one and drill in. Um, mm -hmm. it's just, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really work like that. I don't see it often. And I guess if you have like the functionality in cards where you can drill through, and then yeah. that's also. That's what everyone does, right? And everyone just does that in a, in a report because it's yeah. a lot easier yeah. and you get a lot more. And it's um, less hor horrendous to work with. It's it's <laughs> I know it's but it's the way when you try to adjust the size of a tile. It's so like a bizarre experience. Like why can't I just make it the size that I wanted to make? It's like no, it has to be this precise. Like come on, man, you kidding me? <laughs> when you're used to working desktop and you get all that flexibility, and it's kind of like yeah, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, I think that's when and people go and look at dashboards. And you know, okay, I, I can't can't do anything right, and that's probably why a lot of people say no, I'm just going to do this. To make a report which does this and i can still link things through i guess they kind of they kind of feel like the the on the same part as power bi report builder but worse because they're less functional i'm going to say that <laughs> yeah put that out there sorry but report builder i mean if you get people who are good at report builder they can make some fantastic stuff yeah i know um, <laughs> If you get people who are good at dashboards i think they'll probably still look the same <laughs> <laughs> fair point yeah oh very true very true uh, cool. Um, start to wrap it up a little bit, just to, so I don't take up too much of your time. But um, I hope you have a a nice Christmas period in your in your US trip, mate. 
Will yeah. You, will you get it? You, you'll get a chance to watch Die Hard, right? Because we do we agree that Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Can, can we agree? On I that? I will I will give you that one. Yes. Yes. Uh, I think so. And no matter who who says no, of course it's it's as much a Christmas movie. Um, I'm sure it'll be on at some point over sure. the holidays. Definitely. It's of course it's a matter of opinion, and you know if people say it's not a Christmas film, that's fine. That opinion is just wrong. Um, there's <laughs> nothing wrong with it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, it should, it should be cool. And um, I'm a bit jealous of the, of the snow that you'll be that we'll be enjoying. Though that being said, I'm still sitting here screaming in my seat a bit because I'm recovering from the pain of having slipped on the ice like two weeks ago, and still yeah. I have like bruised muscles. Makes me feel so old. I uh, I don't miss the shoveling. I'll say that. That's something I definitely don't miss. And the snow is nice, so it'll be nice now when I'm visiting people. Yeah. Um, and just get to get to enjoy it. You don't have to do any of the hard work, right? You can just go and enjoy the snow, and exactly. someone else does the shoveling. <laughs> you can build a snowman Perfect. or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. There you go. I, I saw a video on on I think it was Instagram or something like last week, and someone had like one of these interesting like when you see all these videos from the US. Everyone in the US seems to have their doorbell cam constantly recording. <laughs> I don't know. I, I have one of these things, but it's not recording. What do I want to record for? Um, but it was like they had like a snow warning or something. So they had this like time lapse video of the snow. It was like immense the amount of snow that dropped. It was like literally like went up above the door level. This is wild. Yeah, it gets it gets crazy in, in some places over there. Um, yeah. It's a lot of snow. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, good fun. You can just t take your sledge and you have a have a fun trip down the hill yeah. or whatever. I'm not sure. As long as you're not not falling over, I think then. Yeah, it's, it's also fun. just an excuse to stay inside and have a drink as well, right? Exactly. <laughs> oh no, I'm snowed in with all the sugary food and alcohol. Yeah, but it was a terrible time of my life. Worse times than over Christmas, I think. <laughs> yeah, happen. Exactly, mate. Exactly. Anyway, then have a fantastic trip. Um, it's been great chatting mate really really enjoyed it yeah thank you very much have a have a great christmas yourself and, and everyone who's watching thank you very much exactly merry christmas everyone I actually i'm saying merry christmas everyone i'm actually going to be back i thought this was going to be the last live stream of the year but it's not i'm going to have one more live stream not on thursday but on friday the 22nd so i'm cutting it a bit fine towards christmas there um but it'll be an interesting show it'll be it'll be a, a themed show so I'll be giving more information about that in the next um, in the next few days. So I hope some people can join on the twenty. What, what did I just say? The twenty. The twenty second. Um, yeah. But anyway, for the day, thanks everyone for joining in the chat. Steve, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much, mate. Thank and, you. Um, yeah. Have fun. Bye bye. Don't you wanna